Hey guys, what's up? Come on in. How are my eyes doing? I did content all day long. All day long. It's going to be kind of chilled tonight, but it will not. I had a crazy day because I know you care. I haven't said that in a while. What's up? Oh, where are you? Where are you folks? Oh, there you are. There you are. Do I know you? No, but it's you and you are there. Classic Austin Powers scene. There you are. Do I know you? No, but it's you and you are there. Good old Mr. Powers. Oh my God, how do I have so much energy? <sighs> okay. Why do we have the superheroes? No, 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 no. I'm letting you come in. This is a small group tonight because it is, in fact. Can you guys hear me, please? Hey, guys. What's up? Can you guys hear me, please? This is... Session one of content creators, the most important course, or yeah, it's a mini course as well. It will be a mini course. Hello, everyone. I'm going to try to keep it classy. I'll try to keep it classy because this is a course. We are in fact filming this live in the origination of this course, but this is module one. Okay. So I'm going to throw in a little intro. I may split this up in an intro. I may do that. If you've noticed in Pinteresting results, the course, I took out all the sales pitches and there is no sales pitch tonight, but if there were, I would omit it nicely and eloquently. Okay. So, but there's none tonight. Uh, will there be one throughout this whole course? No, no, I can say that and then I'll, I'll throw a spin on it, but no, nothing to buy. I just need you guys to work. Let's start here. Welcome to session number one of content creators. Let's get rid of the confusion right off the bat. Who? And we're going to call your bluff. I am looking at the chat right now. Who that is here is a content creator. In other words, who paid to be featured in this course? I don't know when you're watching this. This is a free course, but we're live right now as I'm filming this. It's Thursday night. Who here is featured in the course? You know how you know if you're featured in the course? Your name is in the superstars below. Okay, guys? So we're going to look at that right away. There's only I don't know how many of you there are. There may be 25 of you and that's it. There's no more coming in. That's what, that's been, that, that ship has sailed a long time ago. Your job guys is to show up on set to perform. You're going to have work to do. If you do the work, you're in. If you don't, you're out. I'll go through the deadlines. Let's go through the rules, rules. Is the Gatti here? He likes them rules. We got rules just for the Gatti. I shouldn't have said that because now, hey, Carol, what's up? Hey, I got to do a lot of shout outs. I already opened up that can of worms. Let's just keep on going. I'm going to shout you out. I'm going to shout all of y'all when I open up the course. I'm going to announce all the content creators. There's 25, I think, of you. Why am I doing that? Because I want to put you on the spot, y'all. I do. I want to say it all on here. And if those people are still there when you're watching this, if you're, if you're someone who downloaded or joined this course, unlocked to this course, it's a free course, and you see these names and those names are not there when you're watching the course, that means those people did not step up. Okay? So I'm putting you on the spot and I'm saying your name here tonight. I'm saying the content creators are, bo, bo, bo. you guys are future superstars. You need to put in time and work and energy for your piece of content to be featured in this course. This is a collaboration. You're going to be a permanent fixture of this course is going to, 
1 million unlocks for sure. Let's talk about content creation. Um, not to be confused, I got to say this. I may omit it, I may not. We have two things going on at once, okay, in my world. We have Tuesday nights and we have Thursday nights. They're different things. When I'm doing Tuesday nights, right now it's a Pinterest, Pinteresting results. I don't talk about Thursday nights. When I do Thursday nights, I don't talk about Tuesday nights. I'm talking about it now just to clear the confusion. You guys, some of you, because many of you are involved in both, as you should. <laughs> okay, my, as you should, as you should. So that's clear. Okay, tonight is content creators. We had a warm up session last Thursday. Uh, I was looking at your videos. Friggin' interesting. What, uh, what is it? What, what was the topic? Uh, I know what the topic was. It was something you may or may not know about me in under one minute. Who, who, this will be interesting. Let's kick it off right now. If you're in the course, I threw a challenge to my content creators last week. And we have a private group and they were to submit. I'm talking, it's like I'm talking to the people who will download the course and I'm talking to the people who are here live, same time. You were assigned an optional assignment to create five pieces of content, one minute each. And those pieces of content are something we may or may not know about you in one minute or less. Who did all five and posted them to the group? If you say you did right now, it's Thursday night. If you say you did, I may look and I may call your bluff. We may screen share and go make sure you did. <laughs> call your bluff live. I'm just saying that was optional. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I did mine too. I did mine as well. Let's get into that in a sec here. I can't be a leader if I don't do the thing I ask you to do. We'll start with my notes. <laughs> Look at this. This is a beautiful day. Let me frame it up. If you find yourself here today, I want you to please stay. <laughs> that rhymed. I'm hyper again. I'm going to breathe. I worked. There's a reason why I have the superheroes. Let's start there. Today, all I did was I created content all day long. I created, by the time this is over, I'll have created 10 original pieces of content. Yeah. Why am I creating 10 pieces of original content in one day? Well, to kind of uh, set the bar, if you will. I'm setting the bar as high as I can. For, well, as high as, I, as high as I could, as high as I can, as high as I could. Grammar is not my strength, but as I, I could, I could set the bar higher. I could go, I could have started in the morning and just nailed out content after content. Just speak my mind. Lessons I've learned in life that have helped me and I think could help others. That's what content is. I was listening to this guy called Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm taking a sip of water. We're getting into it. Ah, we're 10 minutes in. Uh, to, to, to make a long story short, this is the most important thing you can do, is create quality content. If it wasn't, I would not be spending 90% of my time creating quality content. What do you do, Mark? I create content and I put it out there. I create content and I put it out there. I create content and I put it out there. I create more. I put it out there more. I put it in front of as many people as I can with the hopes that they're going to get hooked on the drug called Mark Lalone. I put it out there. I put it out there. I put it out there in the hopes that it resonates with people. And once I get traction, there you have it. <laughs> Seriously, that's personal branding at its best. As a matter of fact, content creators are so in demand that people like Gary Vaynerchuk are searching for content create original content creators all the time and no one is stepping up. It's true. 
It's true. I'm just, I was just watching something with seems uh, somebody was looking for a job or you know how they're, you know, how people are like, everyone's asking Gary Vaynerchuk for a job nowadays. And I mean, what the, the sympathy and all that, but what are you going to offer Gary's company? Right? If you're asking for a job, can I get a job? Cause uh, you know, I need a job. What do you have to offer? So, when this student that I was watching, super sharp kid, super sharp, well-spoken, he was into Adobe After Effects, video editing, like that, he, he, was, he, he knew what he was doing to create quality videos, but not create quality content. See what I mean? Creating quality content from scratch is not, it's uncommon. It's, it's uncommon for someone to create quality content and it's based on your life. It's based on your lessons learned. You learn something, film a video. If anything throughout any day has helped you, whether it's, well, let's go, whether it's uh, something horrible happening to you, but right around the corner, it opened a bigger door and you're like, oh my God, that was like a blessing in disguise. Take your phone film what you just learned. That's what we're doing tonight. Okay. This is what the winners do. Create content. So Gary said to the, to the kid, he goes, can you create content? He goes, I, I can get you an internship. Uh, you want to work for Gary? You want to work for VaynerMedia? He's like, yeah, oh, F yeah. <laughs> of course the F word was in there. It's a Gary Vaynerchuk video. He goes, F yeah. He goes, well, that's cool that you could use all those tools, but can you create content? He goes, create content? Yeah, I could use, I could put graphics. He goes, no, can you create, you, can you get in front of the camera and speak your mind? He's like, well, and Gary's like, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm looking for content creators. I, there aren't, they're, they're, they're far and few between or few and far between. So welcome tonight. What you're going to learn just tonight. Here's how this works. Was that enough ramble for you? Lord, I was born a rambling me. No, I do not drink alcohol. Hard to believe. I think I'm crazy. I'm just going through my notes. I think I'm a little wackier sober than I was when I was drunk. Uh, I'm not going to leave and go look for a page tonight. They're all here. I know. There we go. Ah, we're getting we're, they're right here. They're, okay, welcome to the welcome to the most important action you can take: content creation. Make it and save it. Make it and save it. That's just I just thought of that. If you have an idea, if you have a thought, if you have something that you think would bring value to any other human being, regardless of what interest or niche it falls into, if it helped you. Film it, make it, keep it for yourself, save it on your computer, save it on, on a hard drive until a rainy day when you have a hundred of them and you find a platform like I just did Pinterest and you could put them all up there and get a million monthly viewers in less than 30 days. That's because I had hundreds of pieces of content. I'm like new platforms push over here. I come, I got, I got a library of it. If another platform opens up next year and I can't believe I didn't do this on TikTok, but TikTok's shutting down. So, but that would have been a smart move, but those are one minute clips. I think you get the idea. Bu start building your own content library. Uh, and then I mentioned, think of when Gary Vaynerchuk is hiring and so many more. They're looking for content creators, create tours. Content create tours. That's my dry sense of humor, by the way. I'll talk about that in a sec. In something you may or may not know about me. Um, okay, so this four part series is free. Okay, so people are, that are on here, it's okay. They, people get in in any which way, but the people who paid, you will be featured. Now, let me go through the agenda. August 6th is today. These will all be Tuesdays. Write this down, please. You need to write this down. August 6th. Is today. 
next Tuesday, August 13th, the, the session three, August 20th, which is my birthday. We're going to be doing one of these on my birthday. I will be 48 years old. Whoa. So we're celebrating my birthday all together. Happy birthday to me. August 27th is session four. Then that's it. T here, here's how the sessions work. I Every session will have, I know what they'll have, but I just want to make sure. There we go. Each part has an advanced content strategy. That's how we kick it off. So every session, session one today, I'm giving you an advanced content strategy to I say advanced because you're getting a content strategy that is advanced. <laughs> it's like, uh, it will allow you to create quality content. I'm not talking about digitally. I'm talking about the way you build your content out. Every week we'll have a different advanced strategy. Week one, week two, week three, week four. Today's strategy is called reverse story stitching. That's tonight's uh, strategy. That's what we're doing tonight. That's the work we're doing tonight. Um, I'll teach it in a sec and then I will do it. Um, August 27th is the fourth, fourth, fourth lesson, if you will. So in this course, you're getting four. This will probably end up being an intro in the course. You, you will end up having four advanced content creation strategies. Now for you guys, you guys, the content creators, you will have to submit one of your pieces of content and it could be using any of the strategies. So you are encouraged to do the homework every week, but before September 3rd, you're going to need to have one of your pieces of content submitted in our private Laboom Squad group and say, this is my final piece. We need to agree on this right now. So you cannot do the homework all the way through and be a passenger or be a student and watch and take notes and learn and do your own content and save it at home or not. But if you want to be featured in a course and you are one of the 25 or 30, we're going to name out by name in a second here. If you're one of those, if you're one, if you're one of those people, oh my God, I shouldn't even have said that. People get in trouble for saying that. Yeah, if you're one of those content creators who paid to get in. There we go. That's more politically correct. You gotta watch what you say, hey, okay? sometimes. With all these viewers, it, that we're gonna do a blog post on that. The, well, I don't know. You offend people, eh? But you want, see, I don't wanna go off track. That's a squirrel. For the people that are in content creators, if you don't submit your piece of content by Thursday, September 3rd in the group. You're not going in the group. Your name comes out and you don't get your money back. Fair enough. That was simply said. We talked about this for a very, very long time. Session one, two, three, four is from August 6th to August 27th. I'll be pumping out, I'll be pumping out the homework in the group all the time. I'm going to submit my four pieces. You guys should too. It's a good practice and you should do it. And people are going to critique your stuff and you, you, you'll, you will get to choose which one you want in the course. Is that fair? I need you guys to say that's fair. So if some people by September 3rd, you got to, if you haven't created one 10 minute piece of content by September 3rd, after all the training I'm giving, and it's very simple, any piece of content, you will not be judged on it unless it's horrible, then I say, can you maybe think about redoing it? But that's okay, that's practice. I'm here to critique as well, right? You, I mean, um, and if you say, no, I'm very passionate about it, Mark, and I think it should be there anyways, well, then I'll probably leave it up there. I'll probably let you, I'll probably put it up there anyways. But if I think you could improve on it, I will do that too. But I'm not being critical in the ways you think I'm being critical. <laughs> like it's gotten, it's, it's almost impossible for me to be critical for you being you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I might be like, no, I do not like that hair. D unacceptable. Un 
when it comes to the hair, unacceptable. There you go. Okay. September 3rd, 20 minutes in. Ha. No problem. So there we go. Here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start, we, we're going to jump right into the lesson. We're going to do a little bit of reverse engineering today. Who, well, I saw, I did, um, I did something today and it went like this. I've got the super, I, I created content all day, but I've got the superheroes there so that you can differentiate the video clips I'm going to share with you right now and me whether I'm live like right now I'm live when you see the superheroes it means I'm live I'm going to plug in a piece of content that I pre-recorded earlier today so I'm still wearing the same clothes as a matter of fact I have all of my all of my props yes I do wear glasses you guys didn't know that did you who knew that who knew I wear glasses uh, I got my glasses I got my uh what else do I have I got my I got a bunch of props because I create, I made a bunch of one minute content. I did the things, the homework from last week, and I'd like to share them all with you. They're only one minute each, but there are five, there are five things that you may or may not know about me. And I had to think of new things because I share so many of my things online. So I've created, I've done all of those today and I created the homework today to show you guys. So I was doing content all day and I was editing content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you my, I was going to say my five things you don't know about me. That's five minutes, but I kept going. I'm like, I want to show you guys that this is, this is valuable content because this is Y-O-U content. It's you content. It's sharing pieces of you. Things I don't, things you may or may not know about me. You guys have done it. I've seen some of your videos and they're amazing. I like you more from, I don't know. I don't want to pick favorites because I was only able to, well, some of them are kind of weird. Like you guys are weird. <laughs> Like weird, really weird, weirder than me. <laughs> but that's what I love about you. That's how, that's why I would definitely do business with you because you're weird, because you're, I want to say some of the weirdos. <laughs> I want to call out some of the weirdos, but I don't want it to come off as like a bad thing. I love weirdos. Being normal is vastly overrated. I'm taking a cup of tea. I'm into this. So yeah, and a lot of user, a lot of user are weird, and that's why I love you. It's true. So creating this type of content is is the bee's knees. Okay. So I'm doing this for several reasons. Today, this is all I did. I spent a whole day creating nine minutes worth. So I started with one, and then I said, "Oh, let's just do another one. Something else you don't know about me." Okay. Well, let's do, let's do three. I gotta, I, I had to step up. I told, I asked you guys to do five. I gotta do them. <laughs> and the webinar is tonight. And I woke up this morning and I'm like, okay, well, I want to teach them reverse story stitching. So I'm going to do that video in advance because, well, and I want to share them the video I made, but now I also got to do the five things they don't know about me. So I better do them. <laughs> you know, I got you guys, you, you're, follow, you're following me. I got to do what I asked you to do. So I did one, I did two, I did three, I did four, I did five. Then I said, let's do a sixth one. Let's do a seventh one. Let's do an eighth one. Let's do a ninth one. I went up to nine and then I said, stop, because uh, you're going to run out of time. The webinar, webinar starts at nine o'clock and you have to edit these. I must touch on this. I so, I, so I'm going to share with you nine minutes of videos right now so you can see that no matter how busy I am and how I have no ideas when I start talking, I'm like, what am I going to share? Oh, I wear glasses. Do they even know that? Or uh, I mean, the ideas just start popping out. They don't know this. They don't know this. They don't know this. They don't know this. What did I get out of losing my Facebook account, for example? I got a lot out of that. 
but they don't know what I got out of it. So a lot of things you do just don't know and it flowed and it was flowing. And the purpose of this is to show you guys that with everything I got going on, I was able to do that in one day. So I created nine pieces of content and I edited them. I'm not showing off. I'm telling you that many people have been in, don't even do a piece of content a week. I wanted to do 10 in one day. I did nine or did I do eight? I got my hair. I did eight and then when I mesh them all together, that'll be a ninth piece. Cause I'm going to say, here are eight things that you may or may not know about me. So that'll be a ninth piece of content. And then when I'm teaching you tonight, this will be a piece of content. So it's like I made 10 pieces of content. There, there you go. You may not have this one, but you could teach this. You may not ramble as much as me. I sure as heck hope you don't. No, it doesn't matter. I want you to ramble actually. Ramble is gold. So number one, it'll demonstrate that it's easy to do. Now I'm going to talk about the editing part before I get into the lesson. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share those nine things, do, 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 nine minutes worth. I'll come back out. We may have a little bit of shits and giggles. You may go, Oh my God, Mark, you're crazy. I'm sure you will. Some things you don't know about me are a little bit like cuckoo, cuckoo. And then you're going to see what they look like after the editing process. Now, I'm going to talk about this real quick. I fell in love with pre I'm falling in love with pre-recorded videos. I am. I am. I didn't like them before. I like doing this stuff. I like going live off the cuff. But when I had to do one minute clips, I'm like, how am I going to do that? How? Who, who here finds it? When you're, when you're trying to fit one minute's worth of something you're going to say, when you're trying to fit something about you in one minute, it almost needs to be scripted because you're kind of half in a rush. You're half like, you don't know what the next thing you're about to say is. Uh, you don't have too long of pauses. If you screw up, you feel like you have to start over, but if you take long pauses in a one minute clip, I could say, when I was a young lad, I used to go out and catch grasshoppers and well, I'm not without the voice. I used to go out and catch grasshoppers. It was my favorite thing to do. And then I could do that and go. And I think the reason I really liked it is because it forced me to get up in the morning. And the funny thing is about the grasshoppers, they used to really come out when it was really, really hot out. So it kind of pushed me out of the house to get outdoors. It was a hobby that got me out of the house. And I could, I could stop like I'm doing now. I'm doing an example. I didn't use that one, but this is true. I could stop and be like, okay, so I remember I used to catch them in jars and I, there, there'll be a, like, see what I mean? See the way I'm fumbling around? Like, what's the point? Well, really, there may not be a point. The point may be like, I love grasshoppers because every time I see a grasshopper now, it rem not only reminds me of my childhood of catching grasshoppers, but that was the thing that made me not be like a little computer nerd as a kid. It's, it's the grasshoppers that I have to thank for at a young age that pushed me outside. Not my parents that said, go play outside. It's the grasshoppers. So I'd like to thank you, grasshopper. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of fun. I just totally made that up. I didn't make it up. That is true. But if I was trying to fit that in one minute, that fact about me, that the reason I was an outdoorsy kid is because of the grasshoppers. They're the ones who motivated me to get out there. And this is true. It's actually really cool. So if I tried to say that right there in one minute, I'd be all over the place. But if I take those pauses and then I clip them out in the editing process, do you know what I mean? It makes beautiful little clips of content and that's what I've done. So I did all that today. I did eight videos and then I cut them up. I edited them. You'll see. So you could even put a picture of a grasshopper. Like I love grasshoppers and have one just pop up in your content. It's a little bit more advanced, but you see where I'm going with this, right? It's i uh, I'm going to show you what I did with my limited Camtasia skills 
and you may want to edit your stuff too. It's not mandatory, but I'm, I'm at a, I've been doing content for four or five years now. I think I can step it up. I'm ready to step it up a little bit. I've been cutting out silent, silent uh, moments out of videos for a while, but now I'm not only cutting them out because they're there, I'm using them. So when I create a video, I'll be like, I'll say a sentence and I'll stop. I, and, and I'll stop and think about my next thought. I'll say my next thought and I'll stop and I'll think about my next thought. All the pros are doing this. Like the really good videos out there, they're clipped, 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 clipped. And this way, the content you're getting is ramble free. It's, it's like info, info, in, it's information rich content. Make sense? So I'm going to do that and then we're going to come out with the lesson. Let me plug in the homework because I did the homework uh, in the hopes that you get inspired. That if Mark Lalone could do nine, eight of those, eight of those in one day and these are going to get syndicated on all platforms by the way. So the power of this, these nine one minute clips are going to go out everywhere. All the platforms are going out. Octo, all, Oliver is going to go to work with those. It took me one day to create these. Oliver is going to go to work. Do, 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 do. All 10 pieces on Pinterest, every platform, every single platform. So there's power in that. One day's work, definitely worth it. So let me share those and I'm coming right back out. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm wearing the same shirt. I just finished these today. So don't try to, I'm watching them with you is what I'm saying. I look the same. I don't think the hair changed. I may be a little grimier because I was sweating a lot. Both lights were on. That light is off. So this should be darker and it's nighttime now. So when I did these, that's how you will tell the difference by the Superman poster or the Wonder Woman or whatever you call them, Justice League. Superheroes are up. It means I'm here. You, I can see the chat. I'm live, but when these guys are down, I'm not live. Okay. So I'm about to be not live. Nine, one minute clips. I'm submitting my homework to all of you and share your comments away. If you want, you're about to see eight things, eight minutes worth, eight things of the, you may, or may that you definitely do not know about me. Here we go. Uh, I'm watching with you and I'll be right back. My name is Mark with a C and here's something you may or may not know about me in one minute or less. I was voted the male entrepreneur with the best hair for five years running. I was also featured on the cover of Men's Health magazine. That's me right there. Would you like me to recreate the pose? And finally, none of those things are true. The truth is I have a very dry sense of humor. I find myself saying jokes in my training, in my webinars, just like they're for real. I don't even giggle. I don't even laugh. I say it as if it were true. Do I want to do that? Sometimes I forget to say it's a joke. I just kind of go along. So that's something you may or may not know about me. If you've been following me on anything, whether it's my training or whether it's through my content, you'll know this, but a lot of people don't know this. They think I'm serious. If there was an award for male entrepreneur with the best hair, I would definitely win it. That's for sure. Let's be real here. And that is Mark, but it's Mark Wahlberg. He happens to be my inspiration physically because we are the exact same age and we're born in the exact same month and year, of course. I'm just the upgraded version of Mark Wahlberg. So as you see, I have a very dry sense of humor. That's something you may or may not know about me. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. My name is Mark with a C and here is something you may or may not know about me in one minute or less. I wear glasses. You definitely never see me with them, so I'll put them on for you. Hi there. Now let's be clear. They are reading glasses. I can't even see my own reflection there in the iPhone.
There, that's better. They're reading glasses and they're not cheap. I have to tell you, I went all out. I was fearing the day that I would need glasses. I dodged that fact for a very long time. I'm on the computer 16 hours a day. I said, let's just try them on. When I tried on a pair of glasses, they're just reading glasses. When I put them on and I started looking at my mobile devices, I was in heaven. I was in heaven. It changed my life. Glasses changed my life. Probably didn't know that, did you? Now I went all out. I broke the bank for these. You know how much these puppies cost me? And I'll tell you why. I don't like to show off prices too much, but I do pretty well in life. I paid $35 dollars at the drugstore for these puppies but they're very special glasses check this out perfect for reading at night in bed so there is something you probably did not know about me bye bye now and have a great day My name is Mark with the C and here's something you may or may not know about me in one minute or less. Back about 15 years ago, I had a search directory called the Canafind directory. It was a directory tailored for travelers to Canada who wanted to look for accommodations, dining and nightlife. As I look at the date of it here, it was in 2001. So we're going back 20 years ish. It was also a very profitable exit for me. We sold the company. So back in 2001, it was a huge amount of money for me. And it's the first I had a taste of a profitable exit. So moving forward, I always build little businesses with the end game in mind to sell it. And that's also where I really nailed programming in terms of search capabilities. I was able to get my coding up to par when it came to programming efficient searches, database searches. That's kind of where I earned my stripes for coding for searches. So let me share with you a screenshot of what that website used to look like before we sold it. Here it is. So there it is. There's the screenshot. It usually had an RSS feed feeding the news, the recent news of the day. You could search by accommodations, by dining, nightlife. These were the areas and it would just list things out, list out all the accommodations, the dining, the nightlife. We had a couple of corporate sponsors rotating all the time. We had featured members that would pay a fee. The traffic was pretty glorious. We also had a map. This is where I was doing like image mapping. I learned how to do that back then. So this site was pretty cool. It was pretty profitable and I exited for quite a bit with it. But the main thing was that I learned a lot of my uh, dirty little programming tricks and secrets or little programming efficiencies, if you will, by doing this site or should I say building this business because that's in fact what it was so there you go there's something you probably did not know about me in 2001 I had a tourist directory called canafind.com bye bye now have an amazing day my name is Mark with a C and here is something you may or may not know about me in less than one minute Actually, two things. I vape in the closet. That's not what I wanted to share with you, but I don't physically vape in the closet. I'm an in the closet vapor. And two years ago, I invented a little device called Hide Your Jewel. That was actually the name of the company, hideyourjewel.com. And the way it worked was you would put your jewel, which is the vaping device, you would insert it. If you push it all the way, it clicks and there's an actual sponge in this part so that when you inhale the vape, nobody would notice because it looks like you're holding onto a pen. And when you exhale, instead of exhaling like I just showed you, you exhale in the hole in the front and the sponge absorbs all the vape. I bet you didn't know that about me, right? You probably knew about the vape. You probably had your suspicions. 
but I'm sure you did not know about the Hydra Jewel device. So what I did is I shopped the materials, the sponges, the materials to get this working and I tested it out. I went out in public, I went in really uh, odd places like restaurants before the virus and I would just have my pen and I would vape, blow out, it just kind of like I'm thinking. It's a perfect device where it's kind of inconspicuous and I put up a website with a demo video before we actually went to mass production and within a week I had over 30,000 pre-sales of people who wanted to buy this device before I even had them mass produced. It was crazy, understandably so because I wanted to vape quite often in public and we can't do that in Canada. I'm not sure if you can around the world but it's basically like smoking. So then two things happened if you're asking yourself why am I not a billionaire from this device? Reason number one of why I did not continue this venture two years ago. Reason number one is a little bit of a code of ethics, believe it or not. I was actually concerned a little bit that it would sell more of these devices and the teenagers and high school kids would get their hands on these and be able to hide them in class, things of the sort. But then I says to myself, they're going to do it anyways. They're going to vape anyways. And then after some research, there was something called zeroing where they actually bring their jewels in class and they puff it and they let the vapes absorb inside of their bodies not to get caught. And that is super dangerous. So I was kind of like, yes, no, yes, no. Am I helping them? They're going to get the stuff anyways. They're going to get these anyways. Am I helping them by them not zeroing? Or am I encouraging it more because they're able to hide them and conceal them so easily? So I struggled with that for a while and then requests kept coming in and there was nothing like this on the market that was so inconspicuous. And then here it came. Jewel, the company, sent me an official legal cease and desist letter threatening to sue me. So that made that decision pretty clear. Yes, I can create a mold. I can call it something else without using the jewel name, but I decided to just ditch it and share it with you. So maybe some of you will run with the idea, but you didn't hear it from me. That's something you may or may not have known about me. Have a great day. Bye bye now. My name is Mark with a C and here's something you may or may not know about me in one minute or less. I have permanently, successfully, completely closed myself off from the possibility of a relationship, love, or marriage. And I mean permanently, I've successfully done that. I worked on this uh, skill for about eight years straight on learning to love myself, on not depending on a relationship or a lover. After eight years of ups and downs and saying, oh, maybe this time, oh, maybe that time, eight years made me quite skilled at completely closing myself off from that possibility. But just last year, I fell back in. I fell back in. I almost fell back into that possibility. As a matter of fact, it was super close. So now as I speak to you today, I am ultra successful at it specifically because of the last time. How do I do this? I'll share it with you. I have a book here from my past relationship. In this book, I have a note that I wrote to myself as a reminder whenever I have the urge to open up that possibility again. This is pretty awesome stuff. I'm actually a little bit excited. If I ever meet someone and I even just think, what if, hmm, I kind of like her. Is that even possible, Mark? I have this way to do it. I look in here and on March 8th of 2019, I won't show you. There's a little note that I wrote to myself to remind future Mark, if you ever get weak, pull out this note. And I wrote this note on March 8th, like I said, 2019, when I got my heart shattered. And I don't mean broken, I mean shattered all over the floor in a million pieces. It was heartbreaking to the point where I was sick to my stomach. And in that moment, I wrote myself a reminder. 
and I can actually see the way I felt in my handwriting on this note, this reminder. And it's one of the most amazing tools I've ever created for myself. So here it is in this book. I leave the note there and whenever I have that urge or even a subtle little possibility runs through my head of, well, maybe someday I kill it immediately. So I'm super successful at that now. It's actually one of my proudest accomplishments. So that is something you probably did not know about me, that I have successfully locked up, closed up any possibility permanently of falling in love, being in a loving relationship with a woman or getting married. I could stop this video, but I will make a quick note. A lot of yous know that I date once a week. And I want to be clear here, when I date the other party that I'm dating, I want to word this perfectly, the other party that I'm going on the date with is also in my exact situation where it is non-committal. Now that's a lot more than I probably wanted to share, but there's something you probably definitely did not know about me. Bye-bye now. Have a great day. My name is Mark with a C and here is something you may or may not know about me in one minute or less. Nine months ago, I got my Facebook account deactivated permanently. Since then, have I not only not been able to get my account back, but I've been told by Facebook specifically that I will never, ever in a million years get my account back. It was tarnished for life. It was deleted. Everything was gone. At that point, I was scaling my Facebook ads to almost $10,000 friggin' dollars a day. I was getting there. I was breaking through. I had 5,000 friends of my closest friends from childhood with no contact information whatsoever, except for Facebook. I lost my messenger, obviously, throughout that process. I had a custom audience of over 100,000 people that I had paid for to fill up through Facebook ads, gone. I lost all of my business pages, which included the vanity URLs to The Wealthy Trainer, to Branding University, to many more businesses that I had built, all gone in an instant with no chance of getting it back. Now, some of you probably already know this. Here's what you don't know about this situation. I used to think Facebook was my prism, but it was in fact my prison. It really was, and I would have never known that unless this had happened. I cried for about a month, maybe two, maybe three. I cried pretty hard. It was very heartbreaking, but it forced me into learning different platforms, learning YouTube ads, working on my personal brand, actually doing work, not surfing around on social media, learning like I've never learned before, literally quintupling my audience and my skills, and it was a blessing, hashtag blessed. Now that's what you probably didn't know about me, that it was a true blessing to lose my Facebook account. It forced me in all those other important directions. Just being off social media is the catalyst to everything I'm succeeding in today. I am no longer hostage to like any social media now. In closing, I have to say this, I was able to get back on Facebook. I don't use it for social media, but I do use it to run ads. And here's the kicker. I learned so many other better strategies on other ad platforms that are blue oceans. Facebook is a red ocean market. It's saturated. So now that I'm back on Facebook running ads, I'm not even barely running ads because it's that ineffective. So by having my Facebook account shut down, it was a bad thing at the time when in fact it was a good thing. It was like the big guy upstairs giving me a little nudge saying, you got to go in other directions to grow. And this is not to mention the time I used to waste surfing on Facebook. So there you have it. There's something you may or may not have known about me. 
I used to think Facebook was my prism. If you don't know what a prism is, you can look it up. It turns a beam of light into all these wonderful colors, usually shaped in a triangle, kind of like a crystally object. That's what I thought Facebook was. When in fact, it was not my prism, it was my prison. So there you have it. Bye-bye, have a great day. Hello, my name is Mark with a C and here's something you probably may or may not know about me in one minute or less. Back in 2012-ish, I used to draw pet cartoons of people's pets for their crazy requests through an online website. My cartoonist name was actually Mark Paws and it was pretty cool. I had a logo, it wasn't even my face, it was a cartoon of my me as the cartoonist. My cartoonist name was actually Mark Paws, as in paws. I used to sign it Mark with a K and put a couple of little paws and Sharpie. I used to number them. I doodled out whatever they asked me to doodle out. They would digitally send me pictures of their pets and come up with these crazy requests like, I want my pit bull on a scooter wearing a Pittsburgh Steelers helmet, something like that. And then I'd just doodle it away. I would color it in with Sharpies. I'd put it in a secure envelope so it wouldn't bend or get ruined. Because it was a real work of art, y'all. I'll show you in a sec. And that was it. I would send it off to them. But I scanned every one I did. I think I did about 500 of them in total before I got sick of doodling people's pets and their crazy requests. This is a great example of you think you like something and then once you do it a ton, you're like, I don't want to draw another pet in my life. And also that kind of thing is not scalable. I mean, I could have hired cartoonists and stuff. But that's a management nightmare. And really it's not, it was kind of like a passion project. I just wanted to share that with you. So would you like to see a couple of works of art from back then? Here we go. Poof. Okay, here we go. This is one number 75. There it is, 2012. You see my little autograph with the paws, Mark Paws. I had a little cartoon face, which was not me. A cartoon face of me as the cartoonist. Hmm, how funny. And this one was an awesome request. I love this one because if you've seen The Big Lebowski, this client wanted his dog. He sent a digital picture of his dog and kind of looks like his dog. And it was in the sweater of the Big Lebowski, the dude. If you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. The dog abides. It was always the dude abides. I don't have to explain it all. The dude liked white Russians. This allowed me to kind of unleash my creativity. It was an outlet for my creativity. I'll show you another quick one since I think we're under the minute. There's one where the client sent me his two cute little white doggies and he wanted them in a red Mustang convertible. So there you have it. As you can see, I am not a professional artist. I'm not even a professional cartoonist. I just like to doodle. Or should I say liked to doodle. After 507, I think, 507 of those and the requests kept coming in. I kept putting up the price, you know, their originals, and I just didn't want to do it anymore, so I stopped. But there you have it. Something you probably did not know about me. In 2012, I was known as Mark Paws. The website was Anything Is Possible, P-A-W, and people would go on the website, put in their crazy requests, upload their pets' pictures, make a payment through PayPal, and this guy, we doodle all day long. And there you have it. Have a great day. Bye-bye now. My name is Mark with a C, and here's something you may or may not know about me. Back about 10 years ago, I had a company called YummyCanada.com. It was a free coupon printing site. This was back in the day when Groupon was hot, if you remember Groupon and stuff. My site was Yummy Canada. It was no account to open, no form to fill out, no email to enter, click, print, and save. And we had over 10,000 restaurants registered. 
and it was super cool. It was uh, really busy. There was a lot of traffic. Restaurants were signing up all the time. Testimonials were coming through. I can print the coupon. I could save money and I don't have to enter any email. And this is 10 years back. So let me just pop up a quick little screenshot, show you what it used to look like. Poof. So here it is. People would basically search by establishment name. They could search by area, location. It was actually pretty sophisticated. The restaurant managers could open an account and they'd have a whole login, a whole back office. They could upload pictures, menu items, amenities. They could change their password and here's where they put up their coupons. It was all absolutely free. Then the customers would simply go to the homepage or search by area and then they could pick the province. They could drill it down and go to the cities and then they could select a restaurant from here and then they'd go on the restaurant's profile. They could check out pictures and descriptions. They could check out amenities, what's available and what is not. They could check out menu items. The restaurants could also upload their menu pictures here, all from their back office. And then they have coupons and people could literally print off the coupons, no email to enter, nothing. Once they print the coupon, there's a code. It could be scanned at the restaurant and the restaurant could actually go in their back office and update their coupons as often as they like. And that is something you probably did not know about me. Bye bye now. Am I back? Mm, I love my new chair. Am I back? Am I good? Did you guys enjoy the show? Did you guys enjoy the weirdo show? Yes, I could have gone to 100, 200 things you don't know about me. So as I was going, I mean, Yummy Canada, Dry Sense of Humor, the vaping business, glasses, my locked heart, the prism of Facebook, Can I Find and Mark Paz. Those were just rolling off the top of my head. And as I was doing them, I thought about like 50 more. You've had a heck of a life, folks. Are we good? Please let me know in the chat. Do you hear me? I'm good? Awesome. Thank you. So, do you feel if you... Uh, some of you have been in octal content model back in January and you should have, it's August. If you were doing one per week, you should have 30 pieces. Do you have 30 pieces if you did one per week? So I'm not bragging. I'm saying it was a very, the hardest part about those was the, uh, the more most time consuming was editing in time to be here live tonight. Cause I was, uh, I could have kept going, but I'm like, holy crap, I got to edit these. Cause I took those pauses. What did you get from that? I hope you got the fact that those pauses work for it to gather your thoughts. Number one. And number two, that if I can do it just off the cuff like that, you can do it too. That's my attempt at motivating you to start, just start creating, just start creating. And I submitted my homework almost double. Okay, now lesson. Here's the lesson today. We're going to create content and the content we will create today will be a little different than that. That was the content for the course. Um, the content for the course itself is more intricate. As a matter of fact, here's the structure today we're going to use the strategy that I'm teaching you right now. It's called reverse story stitching. Let's start here. Who here is familiar with story stitching? Who knows what it is? It's my thing. I just call it, well, it's from a, way back when, and I don't know, I taught in Branding University. Simply said, story stitching means you have a valuable lesson and then the lesson that you teach, you share a story of yourself that is congruent with the lesson that you taught. Okay, a real true life story. The purpose of that is to intertwine yourself into the content 
tricking people into getting to know you. So they're there for the lesson, they're getting from the lesson, but because you shared a story, it's making people get to know you a little more. Then instead of just saying, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me, they don't care. But if it's congruent with the lesson, you're tricking them into getting to know you more and then they'll say, I kind of like that person or I never want to see them again. But the attract repel is fine if they don't want to see you again. Good. You know, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Reverse story stitching works like this. You start with the story. It's got, it's got three components, a question, a, your story, then the lesson from your story. So you want to think of your story first, a story in your life. There was two things. The two things are mandatory. I want you to think of a, a time in your life such as the things we may or may not know about you. Many of you have stories from in those. Like I'm going to use one of those as the catalyst to my content. So the story must be a lesson learned. There has to be a lesson learned in your story. So you can't just say, I have this story. There was a flower on my front lawn and I picked it and it smelled really nice. Well, there kind of could be a lesson there. Uh, look at the beautiful things and you know, enjoy and sit back. There's almost a, a lesson in almost everything in life. But the lesson, the, the, there's a lesson learned. Do you see what I'm saying by that? You have to illustrate a lesson learned in your story and it has to have a good outcome. <laughs> okay, it can't be a lesson. You can't have a story that ended up bad. And lesson learned is don't trust nobody. Well, that could kind of be a good lesson, but yeah, actually it could be a good lesson. I don't trust anyone, including myself at times. I think you see where I'm going. The two things you got to look at is in your story that you're going to choose about yourself. Is there a lesson learned? Did you learn something from the story you're telling people? Is there something to be learned from it? And number two, was it a good outcome? Okay. So here are the components. A question. So have you ever, well, here's my question. I'll give you my real life example. Uh, have you ever lost something that felt tragic at the time, but later found out that it was one of your biggest blessings that you could receive? That's my question to you. That's the question, because when I'm asking you that question, my story will be congruent with that. So the components are this, a question, your story, and then your lesson learned from that story. Got it? If you don't got it, you're going to get it because I'm going to demonstrate it. So here we go. What I'd like, what I'm doing and what I would encourage you to do is for this week, if you submitted your five things that we may or may not know about you, let's start here. We're going to get into the assignment because this, the, I, I gave you the lesson. That's the lesson. Now you're going to see it in practice. It's called reverse story stitching. It's a strategy that you can teach others. It's super powerful. It, ca it captivates people. It's a beautiful strategy to create quality content. That content was pretty good, what you may or may not know about me. But in this case, because we're asking the question up front, we're providing a story of ourselves and we're giving the lesson at the end, it wraps up a beautiful piece of content. And that's what we're doing today. Now what I what I'd like to do is I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume that you, you do the work as I go along. So I'm not going to say, well, if you didn't do any of the whole, or any of the work thus far, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just say, okay, since, since you all, since you did the five pieces of content, things we may or may not know about you, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to choose one of those pieces of content, choose one, and work with that one. 
Okay, so take one of those things we may or may not know about you that was a lesson learned. Is there any of those that were a lesson learned? Probably. <laughs> you could probably look at any of those pieces of content and there's a lesson in there somewhere. If there's not, think up a new one. So for me, you saw the eight pieces I just shared, the eight minutes. Well, I'm going to take the Facebook one, okay? I'm going to take the Facebook one. That's the one I chose. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, this content is potentially going to be your piece of content that will be in the course. This will be mine. I'm going to have a module Mark Lalonde as well. So while well, I'm teaching it all, but I also want a module in there with you guys. They're in alphabetical order. So whatever. It starts at Erica maybe or Adolphus. It starts in the A's just so we play fair. Alphabetical. No favoritism. So A to Z. I don't think we have anyone who starts with it. We're going to look at all our names right now when I screen share. We're going to look at everyone who's involved. Under M will be Mark Lalonde. I think this content that I did today, the long form, let me show you, 10 to 20 minutes. It could be long form, 10 to 20 minutes, because if you're on a roll and you want to do it, i rather see a nice long form piece of content for YouTube because what we can do is we can slice it halfway through and have a call to action that says, uh, for the rest of this video, go to my blog or go here. That's what I do on Pinterest all day long. So I do on every platform. I cut it even if it's under 10 minutes so that it, they click away. Okay. So that's the content I'm doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the end result with you. You guys just saw the Facebook video, the Facebook vid video about, um, I thought Facebook was my prism when it was in fact my prison, that triggered this lesson. Like, cause I'm thinking, what can I, what could be a lesson learned with an end goal in mind, with a, with a good result. And that's what it was. When I lost my Facebook account, it was a tragedy. It was a tragedy. And this is fresh in my mind. And I speak from the heart from it. So I don't need to, there's not much performance, not, not many performing arts in this case. I could talk about it and it was, that's where my question triggered. There it is. That is my question. Have you ever lost something that felt tragic at the time? But late, I'm trying to read it backwards. That's why I'm reading all screwed up. Have you ever lost something that felt tragic at the time, but later found out that it was one of the biggest blessings that you could receive? That's my question. Okay. So I want to show you guys the work I put into a quality piece of content. I've graduated now. I'm I, I want to be, who wants to be a, a content creating professional? Would you like to be a content creating professional? This is why this course, I'm going above and beyond. I'm doing the best I can at this time in my career instead of being lazy. So here's what I did. See that top box? I made all notes before I did the content itself. You're about to see the final result, but I want you to understand these are all notes before I even pushed record. I made notes. I did my work. I'm like, what do I want to talk about? I'm not going to wing it. I'm better than that. Now when I do lives is different. When I'm training, it's different. I still have an agenda. I'm just getting better at this stuff. We'll always get better. We'll always better our skills. So for this piece of content, I wanted to make it as good as I could. And I had to make notes. So three boxes, really there's the question, there's the story and there's the lesson with no call to action. Do not put your call to action in this content. Do not say for more information, visit me at try not to, if you do, oh, well, this is for the course. The purpose of the course is for people to listen to me ramble here. They're going to listen to me this lesson. Then they're going to go look at your videos, guys, the superstars, and they're going to say, Oh, I want to go see what Carol did. I want to go see what 
uh, Anthony did. I want to go see what Brady did. I want to go see what... Um... Oh, shit. Shit. I shouldn't have started saying names. I'm saying names because I know, I, I know those people... <laughs> getting in trouble again. Those people, yous, that I just mentioned, are for sure going to do the work. You always do. I always see you submitting the work. And I don't want to say someone... I uh, got names. Uh, should I start saying Chris Collier? Should I start saying names? Because I want you to do it. Because you, I know some of you are so good. You're amazing. Chris Collier, the social media icon. Incredible. I hired that guy. <laughs> Remember, Chris? When I got you on uh, a year ago to do to have a, your, your featured spot for from Live the Dream event. Like, There's so much talent that watches me, that's watching me right now. That you don't even know how good you are. You don't know how good you are. Oh God, I got more. I got more people in my head right now. I got more people in my head. But what if you're in a position where you're not, you, you, you just, it would be very uncomfortable if I said your name right now. What if you were in that position where if I said your name, you would be, now I have to do it and I don't like Mark because he called me out and I just wanted to be a student on this one. You see what I mean? So the people I called out, well, now you got to do it, guys. Chris Collier, Collier, um, oh, so many more, so many more. So Erica, Erica, any topic, Erica, you know what to choose, okay? Let's get all transcendental on these people. You guys have, have beautiful ideas, beautiful personalities. I think I'm done pushing you. No, hell with that. I'm going to keep pushing you week after week after week. So what I did was I wrote down my question. And as you'll see in my content, I read it off because I want to get the content. I share my personality. I can't help that. But the content is content is content rich. Then look at this. Look at all the notes I took for the story. Look at that. That's all the notes I took for the story. And then the lesson. So this is the level that I'm going, this is the level that I'm, I'm jumping to now in content creation. I'm, I'm just trying to get better and making it content rich when it comes to this type of content, especially if I, it's going to be featured in a course. The better job you do, in other words, the work you put into it. So I, I, I did this. I already did this. This has all been done today. You're going to see the final result. I edited it all today. So on top of those nine pieces of content, uh, yes, I'm showing off. I put in the work to turn my Facebook tragedy and really display how it was a blessing, blessed, how it was a blessing. When that door closed on me, so many other doors opened. And this is what these notes are. So I'm not just a winging content. Time to, time to become a professional, folks. Are you down? Are you good with that? Let me share my final video. And then I'll let you guys screenshot my bullets because maybe it'll give you an idea of how I structured it. And then I think from there, we are going to go into the course. I will call out to the people that are for sure in. And if your name's not there and you did pay to come in back when, let me know. I'll add your name there. And that's it. We're good to go. Let me share that with you now. Here we go. As I get comfy in my chair and watch and watch myself. Here we go. Um, are we good? Locked and loaded. So this will not have the poster. This, is, it was done earlier today. That's the final cut. Here we are. And it's called, uh, when a door, I, I haven't even had a title for it yet. But you'll see. Here we go. Hey guys, Mark with a C here. I got a question for you. Have you ever lost something that felt so tragic at the time, but later found out that it was one of the biggest blessings that you could receive, 
yes, I read it off of a page because I got something to share with you that I think will help you greatly. About nine months ago, I lost my Facebook account. It got permanently deactivated with no warning, with no chance of getting it back. Yes, I have my notes because I'm trying to paint a picture here of how bad and tragic this was for me. My Facebook account was 10 years old. I had lifetime friends on that account that I was able to connect with, share my life with. I'm talking childhood friends from school, from high school, on my Facebook, all gone. I didn't have their phone numbers or contact info. I just lost contact with any of them instantly. I'm an entrepreneur, so I run my business on Facebook. Facebook was my jam. I was running ads on Facebook. Here's another thing or another few things I lost instantly when I lost my Facebook account. I lost all of my business pages, my Facebook business pages, and my Facebook groups that were connected to those business pages. When I lost my business pages, I had the vanity URLs. So the wealthy trainer, which is my brand, I secured that URL, facebook.com slash the wealthy trainer gone. I have a company called branding university. I secured that vanity URL within my Facebook account gone. Not to mention the ads I was running on those two business pages. I had other business pages. Laboom Squad, I had the Wolfpack Gang for my network marketing company and my team. These are all Facebook pages connected to the account that I instantly got deactivated. My groups that were connected to these pages had thousands, I mean thousands of members, gone. Now we're gonna get into the income that I lost. 90% of my income as an online marketer entrepreneur was from Facebook ads. Nine, zero, 90%. So I was starting to scale my ads. I was getting really good at Facebook ads. I was starting to break through. I was in the thousands per day and I was going up. I was figuring out the ad game. And guess what? just as I was growing, gone. But it gets even worse. Just wait, I'm gonna go quick, but it gets worse. All of my skills that I was starting to master with, uh, I'd say five years experience in online marketing were on Facebook. That's where all of my skills were. That's how I was building audiences. That's how I was running ads that were converting and they were starting to scale. It was all Facebook based, all of my knowledge, my skills. So I said that 90% of my overall income to put food on the table and buy the nice things I can buy were from Facebook, but 90% of my skills were for Facebook. Now be clear, I could not get a new account. I could not only not restore the account that they deactivated, I communicated with them and they said, not in a million years, that account, everything's been deleted. There is no getting it back. And when I tried to open a second account, a new account, basically starting over, I couldn't. They could either recognize me, I use different computers. Sometimes I'd open a Facebook account for a little while, that would get shut down. They had a way of identifying me, like I was kind of like Facebook's most wanted. And it gets even worse, I gotta, one more thing, one more thing. All of my personal development came from Facebook. Not Facebook per se, but I had strategically subscribed to leaders that I wanted to learn from. So I wasn't searching on YouTube randomly every night to get my personal development, my education. I was subscribed to my Ty Lopez, to my Gary V, to my Grant Cardone, so that every day I would wake up and there would be my personal development laid out for me. I would do that with about, oh, I had about 50 leaders. So Facebook was feeding me providing me with all of my education every day on a silver platter. 
that's a huge loss. So would you say that's tragic for a guy like me? I would say so. The question I asked you was, have you ever lost something that felt tragic at the time, comma, but later found out that it was one of the biggest blessings you could receive? Tragic blessing. I don't know about that. How can that turn into a blessing, right? You ever have something tragic like that happen to you? Yes, I'm sure you have. Maybe not losing your Facebook account, maybe something worse, maybe something not as bad. I'm not quite sure, but something tragic has happened to you. Am I putting you in a good mood? Am I brightening your day? <laughs> think of the tragic thing that happened to you. I want you to think about it. Think about it really, really hard. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. It was bad. It was bad. I, I crawled into a corner in fetal position and cried myself to sleep for a long time because I couldn't get it back. I was in state of despair and uh, took me a while to suck it up, buttercup, if you know what I mean, and uh, grow some kahunas for a lack of better terms. So why was this a blessing for me? It was a blessing because it forced me to go and look in directions to it pushed me it literally almost like i was physically getting pushed off the plank of a ship and off that plank was not my comfort zone i had to forcefully go into situations and look in places because well number one i had zero income number two i had to learn stuff fast and number three probably the most important one I had to get out of that mental state without going into details on this because this is a whole other topic but I was starting to relapse I'm an ex-addict I'm an ex-alcoholic I'm an ex-drug addict I was dabbling in the relapses I was falling apart I was losing my mind so I had two choices I could either spiral down into depression or pick myself up and start looking and start looking really, really hard at what my options were. So what did I do? I went on LinkedIn. I went on YouTube for my ads. I found I had tons of time because I wasn't uh, farting around on social media. And I got on 16 platforms. I got on all 16 that I could find and I started putting content on all 16 and learning them a little bit at the time or should I say a little bit at a time so for my replacement for Facebook I went on LinkedIn what did that do that alone changed everything let me tell you LinkedIn is professionals it's not a bunch of gossip I'll leave that at that. My whole state of mind of when I went to work in the morning, communicating with professionals on LinkedIn, opposed to gossipers on Facebook, that changed everything immediately. My whole state of mind was more professional. So were my connections. In the first two weeks on LinkedIn, Bob Proctor connected with me. I messaged Bob Proctor and I said, are you really Bob Proctor? He goes, absolutely. I like your profile. Do you know Tony Robbins personally? I'm like, whoa. Then Russell Brunson. Then Dan Pena. Then when Dan Loke connected, I connected with him. He connected back. I said, if Dan Loke or Dan Locke, whatever you want to call him, if he talks to me, this is it. Why are people not using LinkedIn instead of Facebook? And he did. So that just kind of brought me into a new area of business that I didn't even know existed. I was never doing LinkedIn. When I got on LinkedIn, I was at 500 connections. Today, I'm at 14,000. On Facebook, I had 5,000 friends. I was limited at my network of 5,000. On LinkedIn, my Rolodex is unlimited. And I'm talking 14,000 connections on my personal organic profile here. I tried LinkedIn ads, not so good at them. So I went to YouTube ads and my entire business is off the chain right now. 
I found a mentor, Alex, on YouTube because I'm doing YouTube pre-roll pre ads and how to position my ad in front of a video so my ad looks like the video that people are searching so they sit through the ad. I don't explain the strategy, but some of the strategies he's teaching me right now are to scale to a million a month. A million, yeah, I said a million a month. I couldn't touch that on Facebook. I, I wasn't even thinking that big, but with YouTube ads, it's all connected to Google. I won't get into it, but I was shown a world that I would have never even looked. I was locked up in the Facebook, uh, little Facebook kind of like jail. I was like oblivious to all the other possibilities out there. It was crazy. When I found out YouTube ads, I don't teach them. I don't talk about them much because they're kind of like my hidden little secret. Way better than Facebook. Like there's no scenario where a Facebook ad is better than a YouTube ad. You have to learn how to do YouTube ads. What else am I going to do? I learned them and I'm getting good at them, but I'm not teaching them because, uh, uh, you know, I'm keeping it to myself for now. I may teach them later on, but uh, they're, they're blowing away what I knew with Facebook. The time now, the time I was spending on Facebook whether it was messenger or whether it was just going through my timeline, Facebook has got to be the closest digital social platform to probably cocaine. <laughs> it's crazy. You, you get on Facebook. Well, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. I used to get on Facebook, look at the clock and a half hour just went by. And I'm like, where did that half hour ago, sometimes an hour. And I'm like, okay, what did I do? Did, I must document what, what am I even looking at? Personal development aside, it was a time thief. LinkedIn is not. Well, I forced myself for it not to be, but here's my point. Since I've been off Facebook, the time I've been getting back allowed me to create. <laughs> this is huge for me. You may understand if you go to thewealthytrainer.com, I probably shouldn't be link dropping in a piece of content that's trying to help you with the topic today, but I was able to build that brand resume, that blog, 500 pieces of quality content, all full on blog posts, searchable, a whole content library in a matter of three months that would have been the time I would have spent on Facebook. So blessing, check blessed for that one being off facebook it gave me the opportunity to get into podcasting not only podcasting but i'm syndicating my podcast now to one to seven platforms spotify itunes stitcher pandora iHeartRadio. i'm on all of them and when i syndicate an episode it gave me the time to learn that skill Give me the time to know how to take a piece of content, strip the sound and syndicate it to all those platforms with no extra time. My skills are 100 X better than when I had my Facebook account. I was encapsulated in only Facebook knowledge, limiting what was out there. I, I, and I didn't even know it. So here's the thing. When I had my Facebook account, as a matter of fact, let me say this now, I am back on Facebook with a different account. And now that I'm back on Facebook with a different account, all I do is I run ads from it and the ads I'm running from Facebook don't even compare to what I'm doing on YouTube or Pinterest for that matter. I'm at one mil, I'm about to, I'm at 900,000 monthly viewers on Pinterest. Another platform I would have never ever considered even looking at. Now I've got almost a million monthly viewers on Pinterest. I was going to show you, I was going to flip the phone, but yeah. So I don't know when you're seeing this piece of content, but I'll be at over a million monthly viewers. The ads are insane on Pinterest because buyers go to Pinterest. They don't compare to Facebook. I'm on Facebook, I'm back on Facebook and I'm not using Facebook. It makes me realize that the horrible thing that happened to me was actually a blessing because I'm back on Facebook and I'm not even using Facebook. I'm like, I don't even want to use you anymore. You didn't do me any good. You helped me learn some things. 
you helped me learn some skills that I could transfer over to other platforms, marketing stuff that was independent from Facebook anyways. Here's what happened in the end. I could put in one sentence. I am no longer a Facebook voluntary hostage. I am now free. And I got to get a little poetic on you guys. I used to think Facebook was my prism when it is in fact my prison. You like that? I wrote that, trademarked. If you don't know what a prism is, a prism is uh, like a tri triangular crystal that when you put a beam of light in it, it puts out the seven colors, seven colors. So one beam of light into seven beautiful colors. I thought Facebook was my prism. I did. Go into Facebook and poof, bright colors of Mark to the world when it was in fact my prison. If Facebook did not deactivate my account, I would have never found all these other options. I would have never even looked. I would have stayed caged in and limited in that little hole, or should I say that little box called Facebook, and I would have been satisfied. I would have said, why can't, I? I'm struggling with scaling to a million a month. You can do that pretty easily on YouTube. You can do that pretty easily on YouTube, by the way. You probably can do it pretty easily on Facebook. I just wouldn't know how, but I learned how to do it pretty quickly on YouTube. Mind you, I had kind of an angry focus. <laughs> so I was like, I need to learn this. I'm going to buy every course. I'm going to try everything. So I kind of cracked that code quick, but I also have previous knowledge. I did transfer some knowledge. I'm not a Facebook hater. I learned a lot from it, but they were keeping me boxed in when I didn't even know it. So what's the lesson here? I told you my story. I'm going to give you kind of like the lesson of this for yourself. And I actually wrote it down in the theme of being completely transparent. When a door closes, bigger doors start opening, but they may not open immediately and you must keep your eyes open for them or even better search for them. Let me narrate what I wrote down. When something tragic happens, there are open doors. They're there. They're going to start popping up, but it may not be right away. That's what I just said. But here's the real big one. If you're not looking for them, if you're sulking, if you're, if you're crying about what just happened, you can do that. Take a day or two, depending on how bad this bad your tra tragedy was, but you must pick yourself up and start looking, observe, search actively for open doors. You will find them. I hope this content has helped you. Have an amazing day. Mark Lalone signing off. Bye-bye now. Okay, am I back? Ooh, wow, that was a nice piece of content. I mean, I'm happy with it. There will come a point where, um, if you're happy with your work, uh, I think that's the most important thing. Gary, go figure, talked about that again today. It was about, uh, or it was yesterday. Uh, he talked about, someone was saying how she was doing cartoons for dating, dating cartoons. And <clears throat> how whenever she would share a piece, ah, I'm losing my voice. It's about time. That was today was a long day. Today was a today was a very hard working day. This is a, this stuff takes up. Would you agree in the chat that this type of stuff performing, if you will, uses up so much energy. It's crazy. It's like the energy draining thing. I don't know how actors do it. Well, is it the most, it gets easier in my opinion, if you learn to relax, but live, doing live stuff is harder too. No, performing in front of a camera, unless you're an actor, unless it's something you do regularly, it's, uh, it sucks at the, sucks the energy out of you, even if it doesn't look like it. So yeah, I had, a, I had a hard working day for sure. My voice is going, 
what did you, I would say, what did you guys think? Do you guys understand the task? I'm going to show you my notes now. What that, that was derived from my one thing you didn't know about me, the Facebook prism. There was in fact a prison. That's what that was derived from. I made these notes. I did that video and then I cut out all the silent spots. And there you go. There's a piece of content that is worthy to be in the course. I'm proud of it. Uh, I got to go back to Gary. Uh, to Gary. When the, lady, when the girl asked him, she goes, I put out cartoons about people who are dating. They're, it's, it's the dating life cartoons. And every time I share a piece of me, like whether it's my, I got, I'm dry, my mouth is dry. Talking so much, right? Ah, here we go. Let me recenter myself. When she would share pieces of herself, her engagement would go down as if people didn't really care about her. They cared about her cartoons. Gary said, she said, should I go back to what people like and what creates the most engagement? Or should I continue to throw pieces of me in there? He was very quick to answer, throw pieces of you. Do what you do, what you do and don't be attached to the engagement. If you're not sharing pieces of you, you're defeating the whole purpose of personal branding. If you have a personal brand, do you understand what that is worth to your happiness? Do you understand that if people follow you, to all the single guys out there, just a little side note, you won't have trouble getting dates. <laughs> I'm just saying that, I'm not saying that, that was, that, that was totally inappropriate, okay? <laughs> Please, can I retract that statement? What I meant was, you'll have people actually be genuinely interested in you at scale thousands and thousands of people. The more you grow, the more your personal brand grows, you'll still be yourself and you're, you're going to attract people who gel with you and repel those who don't gel with you. It's like a way to connect with people who dig you and who you have things in common with or who you're at the same frequency with. Do you know what kind of life that is? If your personal brand is has made it. So if you're not pleasing everybody, that's good. You, you must throw yourself in there, even if you lose engagement. So if you are happy with your product, do the product, put it out there. You may not get as many sales. You may not. So, I'm just saying, I am all in on personal brand. It's all about personal brand. It's all about this thing, getting this thing out there. Okay. I mean, I'm, th that's what I'm teaching because that's what I'm passionate about. That's what I know works. That's what I know that's super uncomfortable for people, but that's how I can share the wisdom that I, that I do have. You know so much stuff, guys. You can help so many people. And if people connect with you, your life is made and it's fun. Do you want to see my inbox of emails? I'm not even popular. I'm not even recognized. I'm not, I'm just scratching the surface. I'm just kind of like discovering what this is about. I'm getting the hang of it and I, I'm putting in the work. Like I better stop. I'm so passionate about this because we're literally celebritizing ourselves without an agent or not for vanity purposes, maybe a little bit. You hear what I'm saying? Now that was a total ramble, but you're exactly where I am today and you will do it by providing quality content. <laughs> now I'm going a little cuckoo because I've been, uh, I'm, I'm probably a little overworked today. Do I look tired? Um, 
I don't know. I feel good. I feel uh, I busted the 16 hours though. I broke my own rule. Uh, yeah, 16 hours and 40 minutes ish. No, 17 ish. I'm trying to think when I started actually working today. That was a long day. Okay, a long day, but it doesn't feel like it. So here we go. The chunks are this. Here's what I put from my question. Ah, I could read it from behind. I want to share it with you. Because this is what it looks like when it comes out of my brain. The question is, have you ever lost something that felt tragic at the time, but later found out that it was one of the biggest... I'm reading backwards. It's kind of tough. Blessings that you could receive. And then what I did was... I just started doing bullets, guys. Nine months ago, Facebook deactivated my account. That's what I wrote. Then I just put bullets. I didn't script the whole thing. It's not like I'll script. I'm not reading. I'm reading, but I'm referring. So as I'm writing down, I'm like, okay, let's say my story in bullet form. I'll show you really quick. I put no warning, no, change of, no chance of getting it back. 10 years old, my account was. Lifetime friends gone. Business pages, groups gone. My vanity URLs gone. My, what does that say? Thousands of members in my groups gone. My skills were all in Facebook ads. I was at the cusp of breaking through. I just wrote that down. It's just coming out of my mind. 90% of my entire income was from Facebook. Could not get a new account. It's because I'm reading through the paper. All of my personal development came from my Facebook. Uh, I subscribed to my mentors. And I keep going. I just kept, I kept putting it down. Um, is that right there? Yeah. Continued. To be continued. Lesson part two. It just continues. So it forced me to go into different directions that I would have never considered otherwise. This is just me writing it down. Then I write all of the good things that happened. LinkedIn, professional, not gossipers, quality connections, unlimited, unlimited Rolodex. See, so yeah, I put LinkedIn, YouTube ads, time, and I got onto 16 platforms. So then I just, I guess I'll share, I, I'll share it with you. Why not? It's documented. So for the YouTube ads, I'm going to read through the camera actually. It's easier that way. I found a new mentor that is teaching me to scale my pre-roll ads to 1 million per month. That's Alex Becker, by the way. He's going to be my new real life coach. And it's, 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 I would have never... You saw the content. I'm just showing you. I don't have to redo the content. You just saw the final result. But this is how it came out of my brain. Like, I mean, the, the real story. My time. Um, I completed my whole blog. I'm going to read it off to you. Brand resume with 500 plus quality posts made me independent from social media. These are huge things as you saw in the content. So I just took notes like that. And then finally, syndicating to all platforms, discovered blue ocean markets everywhere. Okay. And then the, it just keeps going. I am no longer a Facebook voluntary hostage. I'm now free. I used to think Facebook was my prism when in fact it was my prism. I'm just writing this down. So I wrote all that down. It took me a while because I'm thinking about it. This is... This is content rich. It's packed. I mean, it was pretty short considering. I could have made it shorter, maybe. But, you know, when you're, when you're authentic, <laughs> when you're authentic, you just talk. And then the lesson. The lesson being, I love this. I took a while to write this. I, got, I, I tried to word it as good as, as good as I could. When a door closes, bigger doors start opening but 
They may not open immediately and you must keep your eyes open for them. Or, even better, search for them. Boom. That is the A to Z into creating content the way I will create quality content. So today, in the same shirt, in everything, the only thing I changed was the poster so that you could differentiate today. All that was done in one day, which will result in 10 pieces of content because I'm counting this one as one. Meet, and you can do that too. You could do eight things. You did five, right? I'm assuming you could do eight things. You could do five. If you did your five pieces of content, you have a sixth one because the five things that we don't know about you, yeah, may or may not know about you. Plus, you can merge them all as another piece of content. And then you could teach exactly what I talked tonight. Jump in as a leader. You don't have to do that. What you have to do as a content creator is the assignment today. You may not want to do the one today. You may procrastinate. But, like I mentioned earlier, Thursday, September 3rd is week 5. That is not going to be in the course. That's when just the content creators, the 25 of us, I think, when we meet to cap it all off, congratulate each other, say, we did it, who's in, who's out, and I will announce the ones who actually submitted properly, and I will actually have to take out names, because out of all of you, I don't think you will all do it. I'm just saying it. If you're, let's, let's put it in the chat so it's documented, one last time before we wrap it up tonight. Who is a content creator and paid to get in? Well, we're going to find out. I'm sharing my screen. That's how we're capping this off. I'll share my screen. We'll go look at all your names. Who? Put it in the chat, please. It doesn't matter. We're, going to, we're about to find out. If you think you are, if you are, are you going to at least submit one piece of content such as what I just showed you, one of something of that, as close to that caliber as you can. Well, many of you, most, a lot of you do better than me, way better than me. I'm not better than you. I, I'm never insinuating that. I'm better than I was yesterday. <laughs> that's all that, that I care about. I got it. Well, no, that's not true. I want to be better than the best, of course. But that's just, I'm, I'm not doing that. I, I won't be. I want to be better than I was. That was the wrong statement to say because I'm different from everyone else. You're different from everyone else. We're not all alike, but the strategy remains the same. Did you have your question? Did you have your story? And did you have your lesson? See what I mean? Like the, 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 the skill is still there. It's just your personality is different. Okay. So who's going to do that? I'd like to see. So if you don't do them every week, for the last time, you have until September 3rd to submit one in the Laboon Squad private group and say, this is my final piece for the course. Okay, we all agreed on that. Let me share the screen and let's see who the official content creators are. You all have your module set up now. It's just empty. We got to fill it up with your final choice of your content and your story. Let's go take a look at that now. Please let me know when you see my screen. Okay, can you guys see my screen? I'm on the studio mic. Tappity tap. Haven't done that in a while. Tappity tap. Social media is the new Hollywood. Can you see my screen, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Ooh, okay, so this is where the replay will be from tonight and... Let's go take a look at the free downloadable course or people cannot unlock it for free. Let's go take a look right here. The purpose of this is to see who the superstars are because I'm putting you on the spot and it's documented. <clears throat> and yes, let me take a sip of water. But yes, what I'm about to reveal are the names of the official collaborators who will be a permanent fixture in this course 
I need to be very clear here. Let me take my sip of water. Ah, and let me breathe. Okay, this is very, very exciting. Most of you know who you are. You should all know who you are. The only thing is, some of you may think you're a collaborator or a creator, and you may not be. The creators came in early. This is from months ago. They were chosen, okay? So, these are the lessons. This will be week one. This will be unlocked by not thousands of people and not tens of thousands of people. This will be unlocked by hundreds of thousands of people. As a matter of fact, content creation is so hot and I'm a, I'm a very aggressive marketer and I will be, I just got to back up real quick because I'm pumping you guys up, the collaborators here, the creators. I'm selling this, I'm selling this, Octo Content, Brand Resume, and Pinteresting Results. I am selling those courses like a bandit moving forward. Like this is pretty well the tail end of our training. Then I'm creating content and selling a crap load of these through automated webinars. So what do you think is going to happen? You already know. If you have any idea how I market, I'll be sending both loads of traffic here. And when they see this free course, they'll say, they may not buy my courses, but they're definitely going to go look at this. They'll see it's free. They'll take week one lesson, which was today. Their minds are going to be blown. They're going to just take these courses. Week two is going to be amazing next week, guys, by the way. You will get the registration in your email. But superstar content by social media rising stars. Are you ready? Boom. Here we go. I'm naming you all. Uh, one, two, well, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Looks like there's about 50 of you. Okay, so here we go. I will just name you off one by one by one by one. But before I do so, guys, if you do not have one piece of content submitted, by what did I say? September, uh, did I say September 4th? Let me see. I'm going to double check and get it on recording here. September 3rd. That's right, September 3rd. I said it earlier. It's basically on week five of this. We're week one. You have all that time to create a piece of content. Use any strategy you like. What we'll be doing throughout the weeks is just giving you more strategies so that your piece of content is the best that you can do. Capiche? Here we go. Superstars, Adolphus Bethune, Alice Smith-Brown, Anna Lalonde, nice last name. No relation, by the way, guys. Anthony Hendrickson, Erica Johnson, Ben Frazier, Betty Kunau, Bill Pickard, Brady Theodore, Brian Perryman, 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 Bruno Lovrinovic, Carol Earl, Chris Collier, Chris Schaus, Connie Booth, Deborah Polk, Dolores Hearn, Donna Gede Garrett, Donna Shuford, Ethel Fallon, Eugene McGrath, Gloria Stewart, Jan Captain, Jean Serge Gagnon, Justina Bergen, Lynn Phillips, Marc Lalonde. Let me take a breath. <sighs> Margaret Chisholm. Marlene Christensen, Michael Drake, Michael Wichita, Patricia A. Okunu, Patricia Gibson, Richard Brown, Richard Witt, Robert Lalonde, another Lalonde, no relation once again, 
Sandy Sharon, Shane Rutledge, Sharon Ramikis, Ramikis, Cheryl Woodard, Woodard, Cheryl Woodard, Sylvestre, oh, Sylvester, Sylvestre Vidal, Sopit Todd Hunter, Tamara Paton, Thomas Speed, Thomas Vaughn, Timothy Kynes, Tina Delgano, Tommy Lamaster, Vandana Nanda, William Knott. Okay, I apologize if I've butchered some of your names. Wow, I think I did okay. Congratulations, guys. This is it. No one else is getting in. If you feel you should be in here and somehow you slipped through the cracks or you, you didn't get in and you were supposed to be in, you must message me and let me know. And I'll put you in the list. I'll add you. So here's how this works. Pretty simple. I just explained it five times tonight. If you don't have your content, content, one piece of content submitted by September 3rd, your name comes off. So people who download the course and see your name here and notice you're not in the collaborators, the final course, it doesn't look good on you. You got to do it now. I just put you on the spot. Okay, guys. Amazing night, amazing first session. The second session will be another very advanced strategy. And once we go through all four sessions, you could wait till the end, but then you're pushing the envelope. I would start sub submitting uh, pieces of content right now so that if at the end you uh, something happens, like an emergency in your life, something could happen. I'm not presupposing anything bad, but at least if you have one in, it's in there and you, you're covered. I get three or four in because then when I close her down on the fourth, at least you have one in there. And if you have one in there and yeah, you will we'll choose from that one. Is that pretty clear, guys? This is super awesome. I'm not going to bother asking you for your micro story. Some of you know what that looks like. We add a micro story inside the module. We will get into that on week two next Thursday. But for now, I am not even collecting micro stories until you create content. Because what would happen is it's easy to type out a story and I'm going to, well, we will work here. Me and my big, huge staff. And we're going to add all the micro stories. That'll be a lot of work because we just have to add them and do like spell checks and maybe help you out. Oh, that's what we do. That's what I do. If, uh, if your micro story, we think we could help you. Like I'm not the best editor in the world, but I have help for that. So I'll help you with your finished product, but I'm not going to work on your story with you or your micro story with you if you're not going to do the content. You know what I'm saying? Like what if I put everybody's micro story? That's a lot of time wasted because your module is coming out if you don't submit the content. Are we okay with that? Let's use the FE. Fair enough. Can I get a big fair enough in the chat? Okay, guys, that's it. I will see you same time, same place. You'll get registration link in your email for next Thursday. I love you all, and I will see you then. Bye-bye now.